Hey everyone, welcome back to Omwatcher Reviews, and today we'll be doing something a little bit different. Today, we'll be talking about 8 things you probably didn't know about from Software's Dark Souls. Everything we're going to talk about today comes from Dark Souls Design Works, which is a gorgeous hardcover collection of key visuals, concept art, character and monster designs, and even rough sketches. It even has an exclusive interview with the game's creators. We got this book from Kotobukiya Akihabara much earlier this year. The more we read through it, the more we realized that there was so much detail that went into this game, and some of it didn't even make it in. Here are a few things we picked up. Number 1. Despite being the first playable location in the game, the Undead Asylum was actually one of the last areas to be designed. According to game director Hidetaka Miyazaki, designing the tutorial last isn't an uncommon practice, because by then, you would know what needs to be communicated and would have already found the best way to explain it to the player. Undead Asylum was designed to do just that, and also distill Dark Souls' dark fantasy aesthetic and even its cold, sad atmosphere in its purest essence. Interestingly, there's also a concept art image here of the Taurus demon at Undead Asylum, meaning he could have been the original boss instead of the Asylum demon. Number 2. Firelink Shrine was one of the first places designed, but it was originally meant to be a water temple. As work on the game progressed and the image of kindling and fire became more prominent, the water gradually dried up. Where the bonfire is now is actually supposed to be a small pond, which had to go too, because they wanted flat level ground to convey this image of people gathered around the bonfire from the very beginning. Which brings us to number 3. One of the people we're meant to meet at Firelink Shrine is Andre of Astora, who was originally meant to be a descendant of Gwyn. Originally, Andre's role was to protect a secret door hidden behind a goddess statue at Firelink Shrine. And in the end, he was going to push aside the statue to let the player progress. But as development continued, he just became a simple blacksmith. Number 4. Another character we were supposed to meet at Firelink was crossbreed Priscilla, who was supposed to be the heroine of the story at one point. But when this version of the story was scrapped, she was later moved to the painted world of Ariamis because her snowy image fit the area, and because the painted world was meant to be a place where someone being chased might escape. Number 5. While we're on the topic of Ariamis, this was the very first map that was designed for Dark Souls, or at least its prototype. But as development progressed and Miyazaki eventually couldn't find a way to make it fit with the other areas, he cheated and put it in the painted world. Number 6. Brave Lord Nito was created as the original boss of the prototype map. What's interesting about his design was that it emerged very early in the initial concept stages. Miyazaki gave artists image words they could interpret however they liked, and they would be adjusted from there. This is how Nito's design came to be, and it was so strong that it made it almost unchanged into the final game, though there was apparently a version where he was on fire. Number 7. You can apparently open Onion Guy, I mean, Sigmire's helmet. The Katarina armor set was designed by Masanori Waragai, who created it as part of a study on fantasy armor long before Dark Souls was even in production. One special part of the set that Miyazaki regrets not being able to feature was the fact that the helmet could open up at the top, because he had a mental image of Sigmire popping it open and guzzling down some food. And finally, number 8. Miyazaki is not responsible for that amazing chest ahead. His instructions for Guinevere's design were just to create a giant woman, and weirdly, he even had initial plans of putting a mouth in the palm of her hand. Guinevere's iconic design feature happened without his knowledge, but the artist had such a happy look on his face that Miyazaki didn't have the heart to stop him. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, please do leave us a like, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For now, bye-bye!